Hey everyone, it's Daniel here from InfraVest. Hope you're all doing well. Just want to talk about today, CPI. What a crazy day today, right? We saw equity markets, bond markets basically rally at 8.30 a.m. today on a lower than expected CPI number. The uh, numbers came in, if you look at the month over month number, it came in at 0.1%. The expectation was 0.3% and this is for the headline. And the core number, which takes out the energy prices and the vol volatile prices, that number, the core number, month over month, came at 0.2% versus 0.3%. Now, if you look at the year over year number, um, the year over year headline came in at 7.1% versus the 7.3% number, which is basically takes us back to uh, inflation levels of the beginning of this year. Right, the beginning of this year was about 7.0%, so 7% really, um, for the start of this year. And we're sitting around now 7.1% in the U.S. year-over-year -year headline. Now, the core number year-over-year -year is at 6%. And when you look at the core number, right, the core number is kind of fluctuating since around October of this year, sitting around 6%. And it's kind of um, making this formation of, you could say, a consolidation formation where it's trading sideways, although it has come down lower versus the prior months. Um, and uh, so these numbers basically, whoops, the lights went off. But these numbers basically, um, these numbers basically, uh, made equities and bonds and gold all to rally today on uh, optimism that, hey, you know, the Fed is probably going to start slowing down the rates as expected and probably we're not going to get so aggressive rate hikes and uh, looks like inflation has peaked. The 9.1% is, you know, the markets are seeing this as the peak and looks like things are going to be good, right? Well, if you look at after the markets open at 9.30 a.m., <laughs> shortly after we start to see some sell-offs and we, and we reverse the move completely in stocks. In bonds, not so much, maybe about uh, half or less than half of that. But definitely in, in, in equities, if you were watching today, the whole move in the stock market was basically reversed in NASDAQ, in S&P, Dow Jones, Russell 2000. So we saw the equity uh, indices come down lower. And now why is that, right? Why did, you know, you, know, you would think a weak number, weak inflation would basically mean that, hey, this is good for the stock market, right? This is good for the, um, for traders, for investors, we should see all-time highs. Why did we completely reverse? Well, there's a couple of things I would say. Number one is that um, the low inflation number was expected. Number two, there was rumors about leaks. If you see the trading activity the day before, um, or yeah, the day before heading into the close, you did see equity markets just rally all of a sudden. And also before the numbers, before 8.30 a.m., there was a weird little squeeze uh, before, the, uh, before the data came out. And again, there are some rumors and speculation that, that, that the numbers could have been leaked. And if you've been looking at equities also uh, since previous CPI numbers till today, and you've been looking at the bond market as well, we've been rallying for a couple of days. More specifically, the bonds, if you if you look at bonds, right? We've been rallying for a couple of days. Now, yes, we've been in a range in equities, but you, you could argue that, you know, yesterday's rally is or could be a signal that um, institutions either had the numbers, had the numbers leaked to them, or they were pricing in that, yes, you know, it is expected that the numbers would come in weak. Now, and that's, and, and, and you could argue that, Today's move after 9:30. That's why you saw some selling in the uh, in the equity markets. Now, I'm going to post the link in the description for you to read. And uh, this is basically I'm looking here right now on my screen the consumer price index summary. And this is on the bls.gov website. And again, I will uh, post this link for you. 
But basically, to sum up, it says the consumer price index rose to 0.1% in November on a seasonally adjusted basis after increasing 0.4% in October. And the U.S. BLS reported today over 12 months, all the items increased to 7.1% before seasonal adjustment. The index for shelter was far largest contributor to the monthly all items increase more than offsetting the decreases in energy indexes. So basically saying the energy prices came off and the shelter prices continue to be a very large contributor to higher inflation, higher prices. And Jerome Powell came out um, and has said this previously that shelter, rent, wages is something that he is looking at and something that he's worried about. Now, the food index increased 0.5% over the month with the home at uh, sorry, the with the food at home index rising to 0.5%. So again, another problem, right? Grocery stores, the food you're going out and eating from restaurants, that also continues to be at high elevated levels. And that continued also to increase. Um, the energy index decreased 1.6%. Of course, we've seen that through crude oil. If you look at gasoline, um, that has declined natural gas index as well and the electricity index all declined as well now the index for all items less food and energy rose 0.2 percent in november after rising 0.3 percent in october the indices for shelter communication recreation motor vehicle insurance education apparel were among that among those that increased over time indexes which declined in november include used cars trucks medical care and airline fares indexes don't mind the lights it's automatic but um basically this report basically says that okay yeah you know inflation came down but if you look at the charts and you look at the numbers certain areas like electricity like uh you know energy and whatnot um you've seen we've seen those prices come down but food and most importantly shelter two of the things that you know, we as humans rely on, we need to eat, we need someone to live, that continues to move up higher and higher, which is pushing inflation um, and keeping inflation at elevated levels. And that's why it's sitting at 7.1% versus the 2% expected. Now, what does this all mean? This all means basically that um, going forward, we still have to combat inflation, still have to combat the um uh, inflation to the 2% target um, and and it's going to still take more tightening or if not more but steady and continuous tightening in order to bring this number down now tomorrow we're going to get FOMC we're going to get the Fed coming out and and basically discussing their plans their whole projections they're going to be with their releasing their interest rate decision, which is 50 basis point, which is the expected. And uh, you're going to get the dot plot. You're going to get the um, statement and all of that. So it's going to be very interesting to see where the markets and where the head is at the FOMC when it comes to interest rates. And what's most important is going forward in the, in the new year, right? The next year, what are they planning to do? Now, we know already the expectation is that they're slowing the pace of the rate hikes. They're not going to be raising rates as aggressively like the 50 basis points or the 75 basis points. They're probably going to trim it down to 25 basis points, but they're not done. It's still not done. If wages continue to be higher, shelter continues to be higher, food prices continue to be higher, it's going to be definitely a problem uh, for the Fed, and they will continue to um, continue to beat inflation with the continuous tightening. So they can go above five percent and continue, you know, at at a at small pace, right, at the twenty-five basis point. Now, if energy prices can you know all of a sudden skyrocket if the cpi report all of a sudden skyrockets then you can definitely bet they're going to fight it harder and harder and harder and you know there was a wall street journal report that came out an article um just yesterday before the cpi data discussing about the fed members discussing about how far this rate hike is going to go to and um discussing about how there are some members who would dissent 
and who are on leaning on the dovish side, while Powell and some other members out there leaning towards the hawkish side. And I think what you're going to see in 2023 is more of disagreements among a lot of the Fed members, especially heading into next year, especially as data, if, if data continues to come off, and especially if they continue to tighten and tighten and tighten. Now, the expectation is in the projections we might see or very likely to see that the uh, terminal rate, that the Fed funds rate, where they're expecting rates to go, is going to be higher than uh, what they had previously. So definitely higher than 5%. And, um, and there probably is going to be few Fed members who disagree with that, who's on the dovish side. So it's going to make it harder for Powell to continue to push the narrative of tightening, 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 uh, just because you'll have few members uh, disagreeing with Powell on that. And why that's a problem is because, you know, if something bad were to happen in the economy, the recession, and Powell has to go and testify in, in front of Congress, they're going to ask, why did you keep pushing higher and higher when you had other other members in your committee to tell you that to slow down? Now, he can use that, okay, look at the current data right now, 7.1% is way far away from the 2% target. And, um, and, and we had to continue our job. We can't, we can't ease because if we ease, then that could end up, you know, you know, put, putting uh, inflation in a worse off situation, putting the economy in a worse off situation, especially if inflation gets worse and worse because of this, um, because of, because they decided to ease all of a sudden. So, you know, you could start to think some politics getting involved, some disagreements being involved. Uh, Powell can can still, regardless of even some disagreements from the other Fed members, uh, Powell can veto and, and, and take over and, and, and still decide to continue with the tightening and influence maybe other members to do so and continue uh, so with the, um, um, with the tightening process. And... This is also something that back in 1980s, when the Fed at that time was was facing also same criticism, and they had to um, raise rates, and and they not only raised rates but eased, and then went back to fight again and raise rates again aggressively. You know, the the chairman also <laughs> had to basically act and continue to act against a lot of other Fed members that may disagree. So Powell may have to do the same thing as well. And it's going to be a very big, um, a big job for him, especially because you're going to have people who disagree with you. So it's going to be very interesting to see if will Powell cave? Will he not cave? Will he continue to be hard headed and, and continue with the tightening? And if that's the case, then sure, if we continue to move up in rates higher and higher and higher, and as Bullard mentioned, to the 7% level, um, right? I'm not sure if we're going to get there, but if we take that as an example, definitely the economy is not going to be in a very good situation. Definitely there's going to be something that breaks if we continue to tighten more and more. So the slow in tightening is just basically for them to continue to wait and see for evidence of data and evidence of um, the inflation to come down so they can then confirm that, yes, we can start pivoting, which everyone keeps talking about. And before we pivot, Right, we still need to see the data come down. They still need to see wages come down, that, that unemployment rate increase in order to get inflation to come down. And if you look in the grocery stores, I don't know if you're shopping around and seeing the food is still expensive, shelter is still expensive, you know, it it's still a problem. So definitely, you know, these are things to watch out for tomorrow's meeting. The QA is gonna be very, very important at 2 30 tomorrow. Uh, listening to what ha what Powell has to say, and um, the markets are just now looking like it, they're waiting for a nod from Powell that yes, okay, we're we're gonna now s slow down or what have you, or uh, no, we're we're gonna tighten 
more or more than what the market is expecting. What I'm guessing is Powell's going to come in and say, yes, we're still going to tighten, but we're not going to tighten as as how we were this year with going with big rate hikes. We're just going to do it slower and we're going to just reassess uh, the data. Yes, you know, CPI data, another low print is, is fantastic. It's a good sign, but we're not done yet. And the job is not done yet. So um, also in that Wall Street Journal report uh, by the Fed whisperer, um, they, he ended off the, the article uh, with saying that, uh, quoting one of the Fed members, I'm forgetting, forgetting the name, uh, quoting, saying that we're going to continue with, Powell's going to continue with this, with this rate hike as required by the law, right? It's, 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 it is required by the law. It, it is his duty. It is the central bank's duty to bring inflation down. It is required by him by the law. So that last nugget, that last line in the Wall Street Journal uh, report, um, maybe I'll, I'll, I'll link the article there for you can, so you can read it as well. That last nugget there uh, basically goes to show and tell you that, hey, you know, even if inflation is looking like it's coming down from the CPI report, they're not done. The law says, hey, bring it down to, um, you know, comfortable levels, to original levels. And what's the original level? That 2% level, right? So very, very interesting here. You know, when you compare Powell with even Bank of Canada, Macklem, when I talked about this yesterday in yesterday's video, um, very interesting to see that that divergence of thinking. Um, but again, we, we will find out if if um, if Powell is going to sound very, very dovish or is going to sound as expected or hawkish. We'll have to see. OK, anyways. So I'm going to head out, uh, leave a comment below, let me know what you guys think, subscribe, hit the like button and the bell icon to be notified as well, and I'll see you guys around. Cheers, bye.